everyone! Welcome back! And today we're working on my trailer that's been sitting for a while and has fallen into a sort of state of disrepair. In case you didn't see my last video, uh, which you can see right up here, this is a trailer I got for 1300 bucks. I pulled it from the dirt. It was missing tires over here, but overall, it's a killer deal. It's probably one of the cheapest trailers that this Dust Nice will ever find. Uh, so when I saw it, I got the opportunity to buy it, I hopped on it. It had a lot of problems. So just to give a little recap of what I done to it i got a fourth rim i replaced all the tires i had to build ramps for it i had to completely repin the seven pin connector because it had old style six pin that nothing has anymore and it was destroyed so that's what that little box is that little wire you see there is the trailer brake wire but well, it's not working that's right the trailer brakes don't work yet uh, i had to modify and get a bar for the tire rack and then I had to modify the tire rack to fit my 18s. I don't love this setup. I want to change it, but it's not on the top of the priority list because it works. I added the winch, of course. Uh, I added this. It had no trailer jack. Uh, it had used to have one here of some sort, but it obviously broke. Plus, I want something I can set my tailgate down with, and that's not going to work. So now I got this nice swing away from Harbor Freight that I don't love, but it works for the time being. Eventually, I'll replace it. Um, I cleaned this up because this was almost seized up. I want to replace the spring in it with something a little stronger, so we'll see. But the biggest thing right now is that works, so I'm not going to touch it. Uh, like I said, I had to get the wires, the tail lights working because they worked, but this one still kind of wants to fall out a little bit, and these are all stuck. I had to replace the license plate holder because the old one was destroyed. Uh, I kind of messed that up. We're going to be fixing that. It's not, it's kind of a tilt. I want to straighten it out. I'm going to get some hole bolts and drill some holes. Uh, I cut this fender off so I could get the door open and closed because before, this was solid like that one. And if you had a low car of any sort at all and tried to open it, it would just hit the fender. That's not going to work. Uh, I need to be able to get out of my Mustang on top of this thing. And uh, I don't want to climb through the trunk every single time. So, goal of the day is a couple main things. Is First off, this trailer is rusty right now and dirty. I have pressure washed it and that's about the extent of it. I started back here grinding off all the filth and such. You can kind of tell it's a lot smoother than up there, but it needs to be redone. So I'm gonna take my big wire wheel and wire wheel this whole thing. Then I have black paint like what's on this because I did repaint this when I finished cutting it off and coat the whole thing. I wanna make it look nice. I don't want you to think this is some rusty piece of shit like it is. Uh, the other two big goals is I wanna take these trailer ramps, clean them off, paint them. We're gonna drop the trailer forward. We're actually gonna fix these so they're not bent as much, have an extra pin, and I can wanna make it so I can fit the seven foot ramps actually all the way in there. I also made an oopsie on the seven foot ramps when I did this. I left too much of a gap here. So now when I set the trailer on, it has enough room to where it can wander back and forth a lot. So I'm gonna weld some, some little steel plates in there before I paint it to make it so it can't do that. And I'll show you more what I mean when I go to fix it. In general, clean it up. Uh, I wanna fix like the tail light holder, sorry, the license plate holder, like I said. I wanna make that removable fender have some locating pins of some sort. That way it does not wanna fall off. As you can see, like I can set it up on there, but it wants to fall right off. You can see the U-Haul style pull-up straps that I use on this. They work really well and they're like $6. Definitely worth it. I might try and get this F-hook pushed out, this F-clip, this fence post bar thingy, whatever the technical name is, push it out. It was like that when I got it. 
Uh, we probably won't get to this today. I do want to take this off. I want to paint the bracket that I made for this. And then I also need to sit down and get longer bolts for it because right now it's using the stock ones that are a little too short to use with this thick guide. Eventually, we're going to get some boxes up here because, as you can tell with the swinging hitch, I don't really have room for a trailer, a tongue box. So, I want to put a box right here and a box right there. That box over there will be for straps. And this box over here will be for electronics, like a battery for this thing, so I don't have to hook it up to a jump pack every time I want to use it. But uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started on it and see what all we can get done. So, the first problem we're going to be fixing is if you look here, that gap, when I did it on this one, I made way too big. So when I go to drive the car up, the ramp wants to do this and just shift around a bunch, which doesn't look detrimental. Do you realize when it shifts, when I'm on the edge, it wants to shift over enough to nearly fall off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm essentially just gonna make a little plate that comes in here and basically just takes up a lot more room and uh, weld it right here. And then we're gonna wire wheel the two ramps off and paint them. Got it welded so there's about a three eighths gap. Just tacked in place as a sort of test. We're gonna go ahead and go set it on and see how it does. As you can see, I could a little tad and a little space on it just because I wanted to have a little bit of play side to side. So I got a, if I want a weird surface and I got to tilt them a little bit, I can, but they're solid and they're not wanting to slide back and forth like they were before. You can see on this one, just how much I added. You know what I mean? So that fixes that problem. We're going to go ahead and take them back in, fully weld those plates in so they're not just tacked and we're going to wire wheel them down and give them a coat of paint. up a little bit there and put a little too much weld so I had to clean it out a little bit but it's flush with the front I wanted to build up this side just a little bit because it was a little more gap than I wanted to be but barely ever so barely and this side is of course perfect so now we wire our wheel and paint
So while those are drying, I had to go get a different can because that one failed. I'll probably have to get another one to the top of that one. But as you see, the paint is drying off and making these steps rust protected. So at least we have that going for us. They look nice and glossy. Oh, I missed a spot right there. We'll uh, go ahead and start working on getting our fenders so they're a little more secure. But if you look, the other problem is these have side to side plate. I can move this fender side to side, back and forth, which we can't have. The biggest thing is that, because I don't want this sliding off going down the highway. See that side to side plate? Don't want that. So. I've come up with an ingenious plan, and I'm gonna stick my magnet light in here so you can see. Basically, I'm gonna go on each side, and I'm taking a trip out of how, uh, trick out of how they did the uh, back uh, tab uh, holders for the ramps, although it's starting to rain, so I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be able to do this. Basically, I'm gonna weld this nut here, and using a slightly smaller bolt that's welded to a flange there, I'm gonna have, essentially, a little tab pin or guide pin so when that's set on it it holds that in the right spot and it holds the whole thing in the right spot but it's also centered where it's supposed to be so when it tries to move side to side the bolt stops it and of course it has to pop up high to actually come off and it's cheap and it's inexpensive and it keeps stuff out of the way of the tire i was kind of trying to figure out exactly how i was going to do this i'll probably end up using a little metal tab coming out to get the bolt far enough off but the nut, I'm just gonna weld straight to the frame. And then I'll probably bring the welder over here and weld the bolt on with it all kind of in place so I know it's right, and then take it off and finish welding it. But first things first, I gotta get this these bolts cut down because I really only wanna use the shank area, which is this non-threaded part that slides in nicely. These kind of get caught up on the threads of the nut. So I'm gonna cut this off. Then I'm also gonna go ahead and weld the nut to the fender and then we'll start working on getting the bolt mounted. Maybe you can see now what the plan is. Oh, you're gonna sit down in there like that. Same thing over here. Alrighty, so I couldn't get a good angle to film it, so I kind of just did it real quick. But basically, I set this, the bolt in the hole, set that bracket on the top, put a magnet on the back, slightly raised it, and I tacked it in place. And you can kind of get it just how we're doing it, I marked both bolts. You kind of can't see it because it's on the back side on this one. Where exactly I need to cut the shank, which is somewhere right around, ooh, that's hot. That's really hot, I just finished. Somewhere right around there. And uh, we're gonna cut those, weld it all up, and then it'll be pretty much done on this side. So I did a bunch of things off camera, unbolted the winch, uh, sanded down, and threw a coat of paint on the winch bracket that I made a little while ago. I finished welding up all of that in there. So now this is secure. I am gonna add another one of these instead of moving this over. So this whole thing's gonna just kind of stay how it is until I'm ready to finish painting everything. And now we're gonna work on these safety chains. Because if you notice, uh, this one's missing a hook. And this one is kind of, the hook's kind of bent. So we're gonna start by uh, cutting this off. And then I got two new hooks to put on and we're gonna have actual proper safety chains for the first time of me owning this trailer. Not as bad as I was expecting. With that off, that's scrap. I'm replacing that hook with these two nice like clevis style hooks. That's got a safety pin on them. It would hook right out of the chain 
perfect. And they'll give me a little bit of length too. Just gotta push these together enough to pull this out. Pull it out, come on. There we go. That comes out like that. Pull the label off. This little slide pinning comes out. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your chain right here, like this. Slide it through. Slide your little safety back, safety pin back through the hole you pulled it out of. Just like that. And then what I like to do. I like to take it this way and curve one to the left and one to the right. Personal preference, you gotta really kinda hold them down though, that's the tricky part. Now, that's, that's not gonna be able to slide out. Now you have an actual safety hook that works and you can just clip the things. Obviously, you're not clipping it to other chains, but you can you can't theoretically clip it around chains like that. Or you can, of course, clip it to your truck. I forgot to mention, I'm also giving him a coat of paint. From here down, it looks almost new. So, that's a thunderstorm. I'm gonna stop here for the day and come back and start working on more stuff later. So I'm back working on the trailer a little bit. I don't know where we left off. I wanna say I was finishing up on the chains over here, but uh, I got the bracket for the winch sprayed. I haven't sprayed, I haven't done anything to the fender. I decided to start working on getting the trailer ramps to fit in the slots. So I cut the end of the stop for the five foot ramps off so I could slide my seven foot ramp underneath it. And uh, as you can see, with the trailer leveled out, there's not much room between the axle. So I'm gonna take a page from uh, something I saw on an old Taylor Ray video, and I'm gonna notch this I-beam out. And it's not gonna be much, it's probably gonna be a couple inches, just enough to give me some more headspace going up for the ramp. I don't think there's enough room here with how it is now to fit it underneath. So I'm gonna trim that out and kick this up so it forces the ramp up and hopefully we'll have, that'll be enough to give us plenty of space for everything we wanna do. But if you look over here, this is the max travel height for the axle. It cannot go any higher. Any higher, it hits the, the bed. Probably doesn't even go that high. But I know from the bottom of the support beam to the bottom of this is two inches. So if I come down onto of this, you can see I'm about two and three quarter ish, two and three quarters of an inch lower than the uh, beam, and I want to be under two there. So, pushing up on it, I put my knee on it, gets us to about just an, almost an eighth too far. So, I'm gonna take two eighths out of this, just notching it out, just like we did right here. Uh, I did a little more on this side, just because the, the sizing was different. The whole trailer has a slight twist to it, and when it loads up, it twists back the other direction and levels out. So as long as it's under two, we should be just fine to not hit the axle. Honestly, probably won't hit the axle here now as it is, but wanna be safe. Don't wanna run into, oh, I'm at an event and my trailer's, I hit a bump and it fucking broke both my ramps or I broke an axle because I hit a bump and it hit my ramps. So, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this, measure it out, and cut it out. You 
you can see now, with our lovely notch in place, we are actually like an inch and a half. So we're way, way clear. We're, we're good to go. So this next part, I'm not gonna show because it's kind of hard and time consuming, but basically I'm gonna measure four inches in here, cut a straight line, notch a V in the, on the left side a little bit just to get rid of some material, bend this back, and then I'll bring it back when I'm uh, going to weld it. All right. So as you can see, I cut it straight here, cut a little notch. I brought my jack in and pushed this up till it was almost touch. Actually, I pushed it up till it was touching because it has a little bit of spring back in it. So it's gonna wanna spring back down just a touch when you let go, up, but down pressure. So I pushed it up, welded it all in place and let the spring back come down. And the spring back's only like a 16th or so. As you can see, there's a little gap there, ever so slight, not much, but enough. Did that there, did it over here too. And uh, now the ramp slides in and out perfectly. Last step. And it's honestly pretty freaking easy. As you can see, there is nothing stopping the ramp from sliding way back here. We don't want that. We want it to slide so it's just where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to take this ramp. I'm going to set it right where it's supposed to be. I'm going to mark here. Take my wire wheel. Wire wheel it off. Wire wheel it brush. And then I'm going to take my metal L bracket and weld it up against. Kind of like I did right here. And it just acts as a stop prevent it from going too far this way where I can't reach it or you know where it can fall out for some odd reason you know stupid little things then I'll hit everything with the sand uh, uh, the uh, not the sand blaster the uh, flat disc and flat disc all the sharp edges so it's a little smoother it's not scratching as much and hit with a little bit of paint to stop rust not that rust is obviously a big concern on this trailer uh, this is 99% surface rust on the seam there's a couple spots where the rust is through but as you can see here, you 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 even ever so slightly hit it with a brush, it comes right off. You see a nice clean metal. So I'm not worried about the majority of the rush on this trailer. Uh, that's, I'm just gonna clean it off and paint it. And then one day, one day, when I'm bored, I'll come underneath here and wire wheel and paint. And I'll probably do it a little section at a time, just because it's a pain in the butt to do it on this trailer. So, but we're gonna get to it and get this knocked out. Proof that the uh, both the things fit. They're latched up. I think I'm gonna also replace these before I paint the trailer because these trailer slot, sorry, these ramp slot gates are all beat to hell, especially this one. If you look at it, so I'll probably cut those off and replace that. But that's a project for uh, not today. It's getting late, as you can see. So tomorrow we're gonna pick back up and uh, probably start by wire reeling all this structure down. I want to add a loop here and a loop here for my tire strap my tire rack straps just to hook to something so i'm not going around this i got some chain links in there we're going to do that with uh, i want to redo how this is mounted real quick i got some p-clamps i got an idea how to do that i want to take a little bit of the slack out of it too but that's not going to take much time mainly all of this just wire reeling it down and hitting it with a coat of paint so it's all nice and shiny and then probably this weekend we'll be wire wheel this whole thing off in the hot day and then roll or paint it with the rust-oleum you know i'm back working on the trailer but as you can see it's really stormy so i don't know how much i'm going to get to do today so decided to start working on fixing and welding anything i wanted to here before i went ahead and sanded and painted it where uh i got my tire bar in it kind of fell out of the other side just and i haven't popped it up back in um but essentially, what happens is I put all my tires up in the rack, right? And then I run that bar through the center of all of them. And there is some room. So with 18-inch tires, the tire bar ends up sitting, sitting down on the bottom in the middle. That is some thunder. I probably should not stay out here, but I'm going to finish this explanation anyways. Uh, basically, it, when it's through all the tires, it's sitting like right in the middle. Then I ratchet strap over the top of the bar, and I pull this around it and ratchet it to itself because there's no hook and i ratchet it down real tight and it pulls down on the tire doing that on both sides of course i also have a bolt through the end for the strap to catch on to and to stop it from going through the center in case the cap strap fails 
basically this bar can't slide out now and by holding it down it stops the tire from bouncing up and down so on and so forth and you have a tire rack holder well i got a bunch of chain links and i cut the ends off to make them singular and they make great hook points so i'm simply just gonna weld that in its spot just like that and now i have a nice hook spot for my strap i wheeled the welder slid the ramps out on my fancy ramp here hooked it on my trailer and used it to ride my welder up to the trailer you can see i got my uh 240 extension cords ran literally as far as they will go i really wish i should have i would have moved the trailer back a little bit but i made it work i'm at the very at reach end of reach of the extension but like i said if you are ever in need of strap points cut chain links work great especially if you get a thicker one i cleaned the metal off and i welded it in place here here did it over there and as you can see it, it'd go up and over on i'll add some sort of tab here but it makes it kind of hard to slide it through but if we look at the other side i had to swap the straps out so the straps i did buy from harbor freight uh with where the chain links are now this this tab side is too long I had to get one that was shorter but if you see hopping down here when it's mounted up with the shorter length here it works perfectly uh i'm not gonna cut these these are just a test i'm gonna go get new ones these that the hooks aren't bent and they have some sort of keeper here um i just need this shorter like tab length but as you can see it goes up and down and of course this is going to sit a little higher it floats and the pressure is pulled down by this to kind of help keep it all in when the tires are in but the hooks work great they are one of my favorite things to do they just make everything so much easier when you have hook points uh, I'm thinking about adding some here. Maybe not. We'll see if I need it for something. Uh, I kind of got the ramps to work, so I don't actually got to hook anything here ramp-wise. Uh, while I got the welder up here, I'm going to go through and find little spots, like right here, where it's just it's it's rusted smooth slightly, just right there, and wire wheel it real quick and fill it with a little bit of weld just to try and help this. You can see this is where... The previous owner had like a bunch of dirt and stuff sitting on the trailer for a while outside so the water just sat there on it and sat there on it and rusted it away it's still structurally sound there's still good metal underneath it's just not the prettiest so is what it is that's why we're painting it but yeah so what was supposed to be a quick me plugging a couple holes turned into an absolute fiasco uh yeah i had to fill a bunch over here way more than i expected and i come over here Patched a couple. Actually, over here wasn't really that bad. Uh, I think everywhere you see this lip going up and down is a spot where it's starting to rot out a little bit. Then I came over here. This is what I thought the worst spot on the trailer would be. Just purely because this is where the, the previous owner had a bunch of dirt sitting. So it's the water sucked in. It was pretty bad. You can see I filled in a bunch there, filled in a bunch there, there, over here, over here, over here. That one is really big. Over here, there was a bunch. There's still a hole right there that I missed. Had to come back and fill that real quickly uh you can see it's pretty bad and i thought that would be the worst like there, there's no, there, that's the worst spot on the trailer i was wrong worst spot on the trailer is right here i don't know what it is about this seam from right about here to right about here it's just there it's paper thin on this edge like once you get over here it's fine over here it's fine but this edge right here all of this is well all that is fresh weld uh, I had to hit that edge down. The edge was cracking. Uh, all of this right here as well. All of this right here as well. Well, there's a little gap right there. All of this right here as well. Just some of it's covered from spatter from other welds. Like, I can't emphasize. I was not expecting that. I've, I've been here for like two hours now. Then over here, this corner starting to give up a little bit. This spot right here is starting to go. But this spot's actually pretty solid. The rest of the trailer down this way is solid. Just, boy, that was a lot more effort than I thought it was going to be. Like... I thought I was just going to oh, patch a couple holes and like I'd patch it and then it would break away a little bit more. And then I'd patch that spot and then that would break away a little bit more. So eventually I'm, 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 I've got a hole that was this small and now it's this big. And I'm finally getting to some meat where I can kind of get an edge set and then kind of work my way back inwards and basically make a little spiral pattern. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it. Some of these holes I honestly probably should have patched with some, some plate. It works. I probably went through a bunch of gas. Yeah, I'm almost out of welding gas. So, yeah, I'm glad uh, there isn't much, that much more. But that's done now. I think literally all that's left is wire wheeling and painting it.
I got the hooks there. Regardless, that was just a lot more effort than I thought it should have been, so I figured I'd update you guys. So, I'm just gonna keep on working on this, and we're gonna start painting it. So, trailer is almost ready for paint. It's a new day, sunny and hot as hell. But, last couple things we gotta do is I decided we are gonna replace these real quick. I already got the stuff in there cut, ready to go. But first things first, I gotta cut here, and I gotta cut here. In order to get this plate off, we're gonna reuse this. And do it on both sides, weld the new plate on. I need to finish reattaching plugs there, P-clamp that, cut a couple small things, and then it is ready for just grind and paint. And hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have the trailer painted and I'll be good to take a break from it for a while because the trailer will be in a state where I'm happy to leave it alone for a good bit. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and cut these sons of bitches off and get this welded up. I wanna get this done. Scraped off there. That's pulled up there. And you can see what I mean by these are beat up. I mean, look how bent that is. It's just toast. All right, so it's it was swinging nicely, but it does in fact shut and open. I uh, made a little mistake when I was was catching it right now, and if you see right here. I, uh, I went a little too far with it, so I'm gonna cut the tacks I did on the end of the rod here. Slide that out real quick, pull this off, grind that down on the inside edge a little bit so it clears, and then I'll slide the rod back in, we'll slide back in, tack the ends up, and then we can put our pins for the bolts in. But yeah, it works so much nicer and like less beat up looking than those were. Alrighty, so they are done. Pull that pin off, pull that pin off, thing slides nice and open I'm gonna go get some food I'm gonna grab a handle to weld on right here just so when the, they get to a point where they're having trouble I can just use a handle to open them you can see it's the same way over there so we've come to the fun part the part I'm not looking forward to I've got the drawers done on the ramp I've got twin pins on each side and this nice little grab handle so ground this down some just so it opens and closes a little nicer on both sides so it doesn't stick it just kind of flaps down but for some reason they do get bent or they do get hard to open and close because of rust or something it has a handle on it unlike the last ones so these are like two dollars a pop so it was worth it to me uh just a little update it's hard to tell here but i uh i crimped that i wire wheeled this entire side and i painted it and it looks really good and it's honestly dry enough for me to peel this off now. Oh yeah. Ta-da. It's this nice glossy black, as you can tell. And uh, so I wire wheeled this side, painted it. Once that, while I was, that was drying, I came over here, and did this side, painted it, did up to like right here on the fender, down here, down the side, down on this light. You know, tried to get all the nooks and crannies I can't really reach normally. Uh, I gotta hit the second coat right here on the inside of this bar, but that's fine and dandy. I also did the edge of the deck a little bit just to be safe. And uh, there's storms are coming, so I gotta be careful. But I just wire wheeled all of down here. So I'm gonna tape these lights off real quick spray all it down here because so i'm using the rail cans and areas i can't really get with the roller i'm gonna use the roller on the actual bed
short update. As you can tell by the massive pool of water and the fact that this is a jump cut instead of a time lapse, it poured all day. But I got some stuff done before it started raining and some stuff now after it's done raining. Before it started raining, I got all of this on, all this painted in here. And it was pretty much dry by the time it started pouring. I also painted the wheels real quick, just to throw an extra coat of white. I'm gonna wipe them off with some uh, acetone just to clean the paint off. But as you can tell, all this is nice and clean. Uh, all that's in there is painted like I want it to be. I ended up, and my shoes are soaked, so I don't care at this point. I ended up moving them from up here down to here, just because of how that hook was, where it wasn't like, the rat strap was ending up too close to it, so I fixed that now so it doesn't end up too close to it, even when fully ratcheted. And it hooks now, and I kind of like it a little bit better, so that was part of it. I found a bunch more fucking holes in the deck. You can see I had the ramp out because I had to wheel the welder up. And just a bunch more holes over here when I was wire wheeling. This is all wire wheeled off. I'm going to go over it one more time real quick before I paint it, but this is getting painted at some point. And I can see I did that over here as well. And then the biggest thing was I decided to take the last 45 minutes to an hour and I wired wheeled off the entire tongue area and gave it a fresh coat of paint. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some touch up here and there just in spots where uh, either I didn't get enough on like right there or when I, this, once this is dry, I have to move this forward to give that a coat, but it already looks a million times better. Uh, I accidentally ripped the cable I was trying to use as a trailer brake cable out, so. Uh, I had to get removed for testing anyways. I hit it with the wire wheel and it ripped it right out. So, oops, but yeah, here's a little update. The next will be a jump cut to me, hopefully doing, actually getting some stuff done. Oh, and I sorted out with the P-clamp. I also sorted out cutting the couple things off I needed to cut out. So literally all that is left is wire wheeling and painting. And I know I've said that like four times, but I'm fucking for real this time. The next clip will be me wire wheeling the deck and painting this motherfucker because I want to get done. I mean, you could, it just it looks so good compared to how it did before. Like, it's going to look like a nice trailer for once, and I'm stoked for that. So, it's like a couple days after which the last clip was filmed. It has been raining nonstop. My yard is underwater. Thank God it's finally drying out. We've had two dry days. But uh, I've got the whole trailer wire wheel down. You see there's a layer of rust dust parts that I did paint. I did paint like this part, a little back there. I finished painting this inner part of the fender, but I haven't painted the side of the trailer. I haven't painted the top. I didn't wire wheel it all off. There's just a thick layer of rust dust on it. So we're gonna take my pressure washer, pressure off, or pressure wash it off real quick, let it dry off, and then finally time to paint. Holy shit. It just has been like, every time I try to get to this point, something comes up and prevents me. So without further ado, we got to get this done. pressure wash, gonna let it dry in the sun, gonna tape up my couple of things and then we'll uh, get to painting. And this is the satisfying part. Now it's a little windy. As you can tell, I got the trailer pulled back inside because it kept raining. It really rained on me right after that clip. So uh, basically what I'm gonna be doing here is starting to paint it. Now you can see there's still a little bit of water drying off of it. I got a fan on it. I'm gonna start with this fender and go back there and just kind of work my way down. So let's rock and roll.
it is uh, fully painted. I love getting to this point. All the effort was worth it. Look how shiny it is. This stuff actually self-levels really well. Uh, I gotta do some touch up on the bottom part uh, around the edges and such that I wanna touch up. But like the main section is done. It is done done. It is all painted. Uh, I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. Uh, it was both long, it took a bunch of, both a bunch of time and not that as much as I expected to paint it. But yeah, so now it's gonna sit overnight and tomorrow I gotta use it to take my mower to get fixed. So I'll uh, show you once we uh, mount everything back on it and you know, make it nice and pretty and it's nice and fully dry and shiny, so. Well, we're back out here. I just took it for his first ride out. Got my winch hooked back up. Bolted in nicely, got my straps up on it. As you can see out in the daytime, obviously it's raining again because we live. I live in Florida, and it's a pain in the actual goddamn ass trying to get anything done because it always rains. But it hooked up to the trailer. All the lights and stuff still work. Everything works nicely. God, it is so nice to be doing things differently now with like the ramps inside the trailer. I just hook up and go instead of having to load the ramps in the back of the truck and doing this and doing that. There are a little couple things on the back side. I'm gonna walk over there. There's a puddle right here, so I gotta go around. I noticed driving that uh, mud would get slung up off the tire and go through the little gap there and pile up down here. It's not super bad, but what, like right now it's super muddy, so I'll probably put some sort of little metal plate there to stop mud from going through that gap. Just little things, you know. Uh, I want to paint the pole that goes in there. I just didn't feel like getting around to it. But all the lights work, everything works, everything's nice. This trailer is finally at a point for the first time since I've owned it where like, I don't feel like anything needs to be done to it. There's little things still. Uh, I was gonna replace that stud, but I'm gonna do it when I replace the trailer brakes, so on and so forth. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I am gonna start working on another one where we're gonna build boxes and put lights up here and get the trailer brake working but that's all for another video so i hope you guys watch this if you liked it you give it a like have thoughts on how i did things want to let me know how to do stuff in the future leave a comment below give me a subscribe i'll catch you all in the next one